Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk about the one finger per threat thing. Okay, it's a really, it's obviously I get, um, I'm in contact with a lot of students all the time because I, you know, I run the, the academy over at Scott Space Essence and we've got thousands of guys enrolled in there and we've also got people submitting videos to me every week so I see the most common problems cropping up time and time again. Um, I see them every week and this is one of the things that I see all the time. I'm consistently reminding not only beginners but also intermediate players and some advanced players that the one finger per fret system it was inherited from guitar players. It isn't, it's, you know, the, the, the bass guitar is a, it's like a, a lovely cross between an upright and a, and a guitar, okay? So, and because of that, we've kind of inherited certain techniques that might not suit what we're trying to do that well okay and the one the, the thing that I see all the time is the one finger per fret thing okay now if you don't know what the one per finger the one finger per fret thing is or um, system one finger per fret system it is essentially where you assign a finger per fret so say if we were playing in this area here and say we were playing a C major scale right and then upwards, but let's just play it here. Okay, so it's a C major scale, and all I've done there is assign a finger per fret. So finger two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, and then back down. And by doing this, it stops us doing crazy things like this. <laughs> you know where you see some people doing this or just you know random jumbles of of, of fingers what it re it gives us a really efficient system to work with that's what it does okay so we've got this really efficient a really efficient system to work with and it's fantastic. So that's, that is what the one finger per fret thing is. The system is. And it's really fantastic when there's a spread of four notes. Okay. So when you're called to play a run or a, a line or something of that style where there's a stretch of four notes. And a scale is a great example of that. When the four finger system breaks down is in a few different places. The first thing is when we're grooving down in this area here, okay? Let's take something in G minor, okay? So. You'll see there that I'm not using the one finger per fret system and that's because it doesn't really suit this that style of playing in this area of the neck for various reasons which I'm going to discuss but this is where I see most the big mistakes being made by beginner and intermediate players where they're try they've got this thing in their mind but they're thinking yep yeah, finger per fret and this is the system I'm going to use over the entire fretboard. And it doesn't really translate that well. So in this particular scenario, where, where I was playing down here, I'm kind of taking from the upright uh, method, where you use fingers one, two, and three and four together. Okay. Okay, it's kind of based on the Samandel technique loosely. Okay, and I say loosely because I've never studied the Samandel technique at all. Um, which the Samandel technique is a, um, a technique that upright ba bass players use, and they use it because on an upright, it's almost impossible unless you have freakishly large hands to do that four finger per fret thing down the bottom end of the upright. Okay, unless you have freakishly large hands. 
or a freakishly tiny upright, yeah? So they have to use a completely different fingering system. And that is what I use down here. And tons of bass players use this system down here as well. It's not just me. I'm doing this video because I want to steer all the beginners and the intermediates that have got this one finger per fret thing ingrained in them. And they're just thinking, this is the thing that I'm going to use all the time. I just want to, you know, shed a bit of light on why you shouldn't be doing that all the time. A great example of why you shouldn't be doing this is a simple... Um, exercise so let's take this for instance so a G moving to an A if we do this so let's take the one finger per fret system and let's think we're playing one finger here and then the third finger here okay so that feels okay it's a bit of a stretch to be fair but then let's do root and fifth which is something that bass players do all the time that doesn't feel that comfortable to me and then root an octave. So that's finger one and finger three. Now that feels really uncomfortable there. And it's just, and I see people doing it all the time. They're trying to adopt the one finger per fret system for everything they play. They'll be playing a disco line. Um, and they'll be playing octaves like this. With the one and the three where it should be. It should be one and four, like this. And this is just another example of the one finger per fret thing really falling down. So a, a cool exercise, a cool scale thing to do, um, just to get used to this, this three finger system, is, in fact, before I even do that, I want to give you a neutral position. And what, what I think is missing from a lot of bass plays is understanding how neutral your hands should be when you're actually playing. By the way, if you haven't seen my gloves before, um, it's because I suffer from this thing called focal dystonia. It's nothing to do with sound or anything like that, so don't run out and buy any gloves. Um, so what, we, what I want you to do is put your hands out um, in front of you like this, okay? And I just want you to make them as natural as possible. Make them super floppy, okay? Super floppy. And then I want you to bring the wrists up. Again, so I'm just going to put my hands out in front of me. My wrists are dangling down. And then I'm just going to raise the wrists up. Okay? Now, get rid of whichever hand you're not going to be pluck pluck um, plucking with. So I'm not going to be plucking with this, so I'm going to get this hand. Now that there is actually my neutral hand position. I'm going to do that again. I'll just let it go floppy. And then I'll just... Pull it up so it's straight, and that's my neutral hand position. Now, if I get my base and put it in there, you'll see that really it fits really nicely. The you know the three frets, three the three frets for the for the span down here, because it just gives us it makes us be, you know we can we can use that super natural. That super natural. Um, super neutral, should I say, um, hand position without doing this. As soon as you start doing this one finger per fret thing down here, it gets crazy. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't use the one finger per fret thing down here. There is room to do that. I'm going to talk about that in one minute. And you definitely should be aiming to do that for certain lines. But just for general bass lines and grooves, okay, don't sweat it. You should be using that one, two, and four. So let's just, and a really nice way of um, practicing this is just using a blues scale, G minor blues scale, for instance. Okay, so G minor blues scale sounds like this. So we're playing the G, the minor third with the first, then sliding up to the C, fourth, flat five, five, flat seven, and then the root. So keep on going. And then when I'm up here, it's much more natural um, in terms of spacing to use the, four, the one finger per fret system, okay? 
up here. And then moving down here, I'm moving into the, you know, the, the more closed position. So up here, and then when I get up here, when I get around here, I'm using the four finger per fret system, four finger, the one finger per fret system, much more exclusively when I get into this area. But down here, remember, you don't need to do that. And just practice a scale like that. So again, that G minor. And fingering is finger four, one, one, two, four, one, four, one, one, two, four, one, and then I use three there, but you could use four if you wanted to. Okay, so, now, so that's when, and, and if I was playing grooves such as, you know, in, in G minor, um, I'm using that finger in there to do so. So get fluent with that fingering. Also, when you're using, you know, disco stuff with octaves, use the one and the four, not one and three, okay? Now, obviously, there is moments down here when you're going to want to use the one finger per fret thing. And that's when you've got a span, when you're playing a line um, where you have a span of four frets. For instance, that's a great one, this actually. Because this, it's, um, uh, what's the tune, D-Mac? Sir, Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder, right? This first bit, You know, it's got a nice four fret spread. So that's when I'm going to be using that system. Now, this part here is where I go back into the three, uh, the, the three fret system. Okay, so. So here's one, two, four. Notice I'm not playing one, three, one. I've got this little finger lingering doing nothing. It's one, four, one, one, two, four, one, four, one, one, two, four. So that's mixing the two systems. Okay, and then obviously, again. <coughs> now the original, actually goes up here and again as I was saying before I'm using the four finger four finger the one finger per fret system up here so it's almost like the line doesn't dictate sometimes which fingering system you're going to use. It'll be where you are on the neck. But sometimes, especially down here, it will be the line that dictates it. Um, for instance, if it was a more complicated run, so uh, if it was something like that, within a groove or within a solo or anything like that, you are going to... You are going to use that four finger per fret system because it just makes sense. And, and it doesn't make sense to use the, this system, you know. But so you want to get that, that spread when you're doing that. Another thing that I want to go, just discuss before I go, is, is shifting within 
the four finger, the, the one finger per fret system. Say for instance we're playing down here and we're playing a G major. For some people that would be a really, really big stretch. So where, if it is a huge stretch for you, what I'd like you to do is think of assigning a, pink, a finger per fret. This is obviously if you're using that finger per fret system down here, okay, for a particular line. Assign a finger per fret, but you don't have to have the finger hovering over the fret. This is if you've got smaller hands. Watch this, so I can keep my hand in a neutral position. Okay, let's take that line, them last three notes. I'm not doing this. I'm playing. As I play the F sharp there, this finger sneaks up. So I am playing a finger per fret, but I'm not doing this. Because it's just such a strain tone. And I always try and get a little bit of movement like that. Even when I'm, and, I, and I've got quite big hands as well, I've got a really big stretch. But even for me, I'm always trying to have a little bit of movement in there between the notes. I'm not trying to force it and overstretch and keep those fingers completely engaged over the frets at all costs. Like this, okay, it's more of a, you'll see that first finger moving back and forward here. So hopefully guys, this kind of just opened up the idea that you don't have to use that finger, that one finger per fret system all the time. It, don't get me wrong, it does have its place when you're playing solos. You know, even down here. Okay, when you're playing solos down there, it does have its place, but it's not exclusive. It's not the rule. Okay, it's just a system that we can employ when we need to get a really efficient fingering system. Okay, sometimes it doesn't fit. So a lot of the time, like, you know, take a look at your technique. Is there any bass lines that you're playing right now, especially if you've been really used to playing this one finger per fret system on everything you do? Is there anything that you're playing, like crazy disco lines with fingers one and three? It's something I see all the time, so I'm sure that there's a lot of people watching this right now and thinking, oops, I do that all the time, okay? If you do, you know, when you start using this um, closed system, so fingers one, two, and four, it's going to feel a bit weird to start with because, you know, you know you've probably never done it before, but just give it a Give it, a bit, give it a bit of a chance. It really is worth it. And then try and defy, devise stuff that goes between the two. I really like practicing certain lines that will start with one fingering system and then move to the other and then back and then forward. Like I did at the top of this video, you know, I was sort of, sort of like... Um, Okay, so there I went from that that closed position to the this more one finger per fret thing as well. So it's really going to benefit you if you practice going between the two and finding out, you know, what's going to work for you and when. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson, guys. And if you did, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously, because then you'll be notified when I release other videos like this. And also go over to scottsbasslessons.com. Check out the academy. You can get a 14-day free trial there. It's the coolest online base school there is. Um, I'll put a link in the bottom of this if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching this on the site, well, you'll see links everywhere for it. So take it easy, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the shed. Bye. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge.
Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello 